kind of cooking. Hello, my channel mammals. Guess what? Today, we're going to learn some new things. Come with me. These are thimbles, right? Well, there's another kind of thimble. thimble. This is also a thimble. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but this is a small thimble, actually. On ships, some of the thimbles are massive, as big as my body. Huge thimbles. And um, so that's one of the things we're going to learn. Now this one's kind of been through a war, so it's not as pretty. But see, this is, I hear, see this big eye? It's called an eye. I've been calling it a loop for you. And here's another eye. See, an eye is a, a hole that you've made by looping the, the line back. And here is another eye going off that way. But here, where the eye finished it's weaving back into itself. It was all fraying really badly. Like there was just shags hanging down. And so I did um, whipping. And it was all tight together, but it's been through a war since. So, <laughs> so it's not very pretty. And I used um, kind of a, I don't know, a shabby old piece of, but it just shows you it's hard and it's tight and it's holding this from frame. This is another way of making a loop in a rope. You bring the end of the rope around and then you weave it back into the rope. This is called marlin spike. Anything to do with ropes really is called marlin spike. And, um, but, but this is very formally where you are weaving it back in. We can look at this end too. might be easier to see it. See? So this rope wove, wove itself back into this rope. It's hard as a rock. It can never come undone. This is not whipping, but I did originally did this in whipping. But um, we've, ch and see, see the, do you see the um, thimbles in here? Can you see them? Here, I'll get you over here. Yeah, there you can see, you can see the thimbles in here. And these are called cable clamps. They're for clamping together any kind of a cable. So they're an unusual looking piece of hardware where there's a groove in the middle and two grooves on either side so that this hoop shaped piece of, of threaded rod pulls the two pieces of cable very tight together. Then you tighten down these bolts so hard that it just will they'll never move and that's another that's a, another really secure way to keep a rope going around something protected from wearing away by having a thimble and then also protected from coming apart this this big box floated in during a big storm called sandy here and um, so we, we actually screwed it onto a wall so that we could find a place that no varmint, vermin could get in. And so the way I open this is I undo the hook. See the hook right there? And then this pulley system, see that pulley system over here? See that? That's the counterweight. This is the weight, and this is the counterweight. Now let me show you the whipping I did on here. See? That's done with the linen. And I used a cable clamp and whipping. So the cable clamp 
keeps the two pieces together. And as an extra finishing um, precaution of the rope coming untwisted and, un and frayed, I use the whipping, you see? And then I'll show you over here with these. See, this is the block. Um, let me just turn this light on here. Does that help? See, this is a, that's called a block. And so it has the um, pieces coming through and then the counter, the, the weight here, the counterweight is here. I, I told you the wrong thing. This is the weight and this is the counterweight that keeps everything straight. If you didn't have this counterweight down here on this little pulley uh, system, it would um, splay out and get all cockeyed and, the, and the, uh, the line could fall off of it and so forth and fall out. But here, um, you can see this up close, you see? Here's where I, I did the same thing with using a cable clamp and the whipping to keep this from fraying. But it shows you where I tied two pieces together, the two, the two ends together. The end that is inside pulled back into being tucked in. See how it's kind of bulging right here a little bit? Do you see how it bulges just a bit right there? That's where the loop and this piece of line is. And then I tied it together just to finish it off nicely. And then this is very heavy. <laughs> but here's a piece of um, some cord that I use that's very strong. It's not as pretty. It's more, but it's hard as a rock. It will never come undone. Oh, God. It's so heavy. <laughs> okay, and then when I want to, so I can open this and stow things in it. And nobody can hide in there. And then take this down and hook it on. And then these things, I just clamp up in there, like that. This is the kind of whipping we're going to learn. And I'll, I'll show you whipping all over the ship. You see this? And it it really can't come undone. It really holds the end of something together. Or you can make a loop like this. You see, you can make a loop around, what is it? A thimble. See these tiny little thimbles? They make them tiny also. And the purpose of a thimble in a ship or in any, anything other than protecting your your, your thumbs from a needle going through them <laughs> is it, it the the rocking and the wear is on the steel against the steel rather than the the rope against the steel. You see, so that's what the thimble is is for in anything other than sewing. <laughs> and um, so these these have been up as you can tell for a long time. They need to be scraped down and re-varnished, which we haven't done in a long time. So this summer, we're going to scrape all this down and re-varnish them. I put um, hose on the back side of them so that when they were hanging on the side of the ship outside here and tied onto these, tied onto these railings, they wouldn't um, hurt the ship. So the rubber was what was touching the ship. And um, like a bumper, keeping the ship protected by a, bu a rubber bumper, you see? So, um, and then I also, these are just old bladders that, actually they came out of a, a New York um, uh, firehouse. Isn't that strange? These ladders came out of a firehouse. They were just for getting uh, up high to, to get all the, um, uh, what do you call that? The, the two the hose, the fire hose, off of the drying lines that they hang it on, on these big um, high uh, tops of the, inside the building. And so 
Anyway, when they took the firehouse apart, they gave us these ladders. And, and we had them all, we varnished them and varnished them and varnished them, but now they need to be, you know, really um, closed down. But we use them for coming up out of the, um, like out of the, the kayak or the canoe to get on board the ship and get through these, these gates here. Okay, so that's what we use these for. Now, um, the reason that I had to redo this whipping, see if I can see some pieces here. Yes, here, have a seat, my channel mammals. Get yourselves comfortable. And here is an example of why we're redoing the whipping. Normally you wouldn't ever have to. But you see, I used a linen cord, which was very foolish because it just falls apart. You see? It just comes right off. And, and this will come off, you know, in a, in a storm. Or if you're actually using it, can you imagine climbing onto the ladder and the, and the whipping coming undone? <laughs> that, would be, that would be sad <laughs> and sorry. Now this whipping is staying on and it's not as important because it's just holding these ends together. The whipping that would be dangerous to come apart is on the thimbles. So I won't, I won't probably re replace these two cords, and, but I will of course replace this one. And then this is the part that wraps around the thimble. And um, this is the part that wraps around the thimble. And then there's that part that's already on there. And that's not done with a, I'm going, to read, I'm going to redo that one anyway, but it's not done with a linen cord. That's why it's still there. Uh, but it's still, I can see that it, it needed to be redone to, to, I might as well since I'm up here. So I have this cord. There's one more, <laughs> I think. Let me make sure. <laughs> see, I see that cord, this cord. Are there only two cords? I guess so. There's one cord missing, so I'll have to find that cord. But we can get these done around the thimbles, and I'll do that standing up. Um, but I'll show you how to whip on this one, because it doesn't have to be connected to the thimble. Okay, so. So, my channel mammals. You just need a few things for this project. You need a pair of pliers. And depending on how big the cord is, you might need a bigger pair or a tinier pair. A pair of scissors. And <laughs> a crochet hook. Now I was going to get a croquet hoop <laughs> and throw it out to sea but and then show you that I really meant to say a croquet hook a, cro a croquet hook and that's what this is I mean a crochet <laughs> a crochet hook <laughs> and um, then you just need whatever kind of cording you're going to use or ribbon or whatever you're using now this cording I chose specifically because it's a braided cord and it will and it's made of some kind of what do they call it like a poly propylene or some fancy combination of words and it should last forever or nearly so i thought this would be the better kind of cording to use than a linen cording nothing you don't want anything natural um okay so here we go for, for out at sea anyway so you, what you do the, it's all in the loop <laughs> that's what you're you're aiming for is that loop you're trying to get to the top of the loop and the bottom of the loop is important it needs to be long enough for you to grab onto in the end I'll show you why with those pliers so here's what we're going to do here the whole purpose in this piece of court of line or on a ship you call rope line if it's used for the water. So this isn't really used for the water, so it's rope. But sometimes we call everything a line. Um, you know, like, send me a lime! <laughs> a lime! 
<laughs> if you're drowning. <laughs> and so, um, so anyway, you, you make a loop and, and now I'll explain, I can only explain by doing it, really. But what you're trying to do with this is to keep this from coming undone and fraying apart, okay? So you're just protecting the, the, the line from falling apart. Because if you just left this out in the wind, it would come unwrapped more and more and more, and it would become all fuzzy, and it would just fall apart. And pretty soon, you'd have to buy new line. So this is a protection. Okay, so what you do is keep this part at the bottom where it's very important that you um, hold your, and then keep this loop up at the top. So I'm going to, I'm going to start here. And keep these two together, these two, these two lines here together uh, of this little cord like that. And then you see I'm taking the one over the other. You have to kind of nurse it along at first, okay? And then pull very tight whilst you're holding it so it doesn't slip out of your fingers. And then once you get started, it will take care of itself. And the whole idea here is that you have to keep it very, very tight. I'm pulling with all my might. See, I'm pulling very hard till my fingers turn red. Like that. See? Pulling very tight. All the way around, row after row, right next to each other, never on top of each other. If you doubled one over another, that would make the one that you doubled over longer because it would be going over a hump, do you see? So if ever they got separated, um, it would make the whole thing fall apart because it would be too loose in one part. So that's why every one has to be next to the other one. Even with tiny little thread if you're using it, you want it to be really tight together and in one row, one single row, see? And you can see the loop here. It's kind of twisting on me, so it's getting around the back and all, but it's all there. And keep it right next to each other and keep pulling each time. Okay, now I need to cut this. So we have this um, piece of cord here, longer than we think we need, probably. And then we take our crochet hook and pull it through. If it's a bigger loop, you know, uh, you don't need the crochet hook until the very end. You don't really need it at all if you're working with big materials. See, and then you turn the crochet hook so that it keeps this from falling off as you pull it through. Do you see? There. Now. So I'm now, I'll just use the crochet hook instead of my finger so you can see it. See, I've got the hook, the crochet, the, it, the loop coming through here, through that loop at the top. You see? It's through the loop at the top. And then I use my pliers. Everything's kind of twisted around here, so it's a little hard to see it as a direct line. And see, I'm pulling. Did you see that? I pulled. I pulled this cord down. And the loop has gone into very tight lines here. And, and part of the, and the, the cord is also getting pulled in. You have to really pull hard here. Sometimes I, 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 see this is hard as a rock. It's almost like a piece of wood or something. It's so hard and strong. And I need to pull even more. Because I want that to go down inside as far as I can. 
and it's going it's working its way down there right now see how short this well it needs to still go farther it's I pulled it very very tight so it's taking a lot to get it through but because it's such tough cord I'm not afraid it's going to break if I was doing this with linen it might break sometimes what I do is put the pliers right up to it and bend them back and it gives it a and sometimes you can even put your scissors here and bend the cord over the scissors I hope you can see how this works it gives you an extra hard thing to pull against hard to see isn't it now one thing you don't ever want you don't want this this is pulled down to about here somewhere in here you never want this cord to go all the way through or it will un it will undo the work that you did you want to keep it there and so that it's pulled in and tight and can't come out but it's not going to fall out um, fall apart and now this one now if I did this if I cut this longer often I'll tie a knot in the middle a square knot to keep those two ends maybe I, I will here too maybe and then you can light it with a, uh, a match um, which I might try to show you or I might not <laughs> I can show you on another one um, yeah because I actually didn't cut these long enough for that process so I think I'm just gonna leave it and I'll show you on another one how you can um, finish it off another way of finishing it off and I'll show you some examples of other things around Yankee that we've done to help explain what it looks like in different circumstances okay now this is protected this will never fray this will never be able to get out of this hard if I I mean I could almost use it as a musical instrument you hear it <laughs> and then you want to cut this off here so that it can't by mistake be pulled out and you'll cut this off too and that's a wrap isn't that great now I'm going to also show you how to do it with the thimble and I'm going to show you other examples let's take a break and go for a walk shall we and go see other places I've done this nor this kind of whipping mush giddy up go no follow me